Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is one of the last few movies under Marvel's Phase 4 which opened up a lot of doors for the MCU franchise. For today's video, we'll be sharing with you a list of facts that you may not know about the movie and more, so make sure you tune in if you don't want to miss out. So without further ado, here are several facts you didn't know about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Starting today's list, did you know the director of the first movie was supposed to return? Following the release of Doctor Strange, director Scott Derrickson stated that he would like to to return to direct a sequel, which would enable him to produce a film that is more visceral. Derrickson officially agreed to direct the sequel a few years later, with a May 2021 release date in mind. Next, one of the first things they announced about the Doctor Strange sequel is its title. Kevin Derrickson and Kevin Feige announced in July 2019 at Comic-Con that Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness would be released in May 2021. The movie's screenwriter was announced in October 2019 as Jade Alley Bartlett. So yes, before it had a screen Writer, the movie had a title and a release date. Interestingly enough, the movie's first director also wanted to do a horror movie, but the executives at Marvel weren't too keen on the idea. Derrickson had a background in horror, and he wanted to look into the horror elements that have been in Doctor Strange's comic book stories for a long time. Feige, on the other hand, would step in to clarify that the film would not be a horror film, but rather a big MCU film with scary sequences, possibly to avert the ire of a larger audience. Next, another thing you need to know about the movie is that it's somewhat dependent on Disney Plus's TV show. Feige also said that Multiverse of Madness would be directly set up by Marvel's first Disney Plus show, WandaVision. Doctor Strange was supposed to appear in that show at one point, but it didn't happen. In the meantime, Loki introduced the multiverse to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and Loki the character was supposed to appear in the Multiverse of Madness, but neither of those things transpired, and then eventually, Derrickson exited the movie production. Derrickson quit directing Multiverse of Madness due to creative differences that that were said to be about how much horror the movie would have. Instead, he went on to direct his long-awaited straight-up horror film, The Black Phone. There was no concern that any script would be based on Derrickson's work or concepts because the movie's concepts had not yet been incorporated into the draft of the screenplay. Following Derrickson's departure, the executives scrapped the previous script and a new writer was tapped to work on the movie. When Derrickson left, Bartlett's script was dropped. Michael Waldron, on the other hand, was hired to rework the project, and for those of you who don't know, him, he was the lead writer on Loki, making him a reliable Marvel employee with multiverse experience. But Michael Waldron wasn't the only new guy they asked to work on the movie. They also introduced another talent who helped build the modern superhero blockbuster. Sam Raimi was approached to work with Derrickson out. He was known for his work in the Evil Dead films, and he was good at horror. After that, he directed the first three films in the Spider-Man series, making him a legend in the comic book movie industry. He hesitated to return to the superhero hero universe after Spider-Man 3's success, Raimi eventually forgot about his worries and signed on with the movie. There was a lot of excitement when he said he was going to direct a new movie. Since 2013's failure, Oz the Great and Powerful, Raimi had not directed a movie. And like many other projects, the COVID-19 pandemic also affected the film. Waldron had three weeks to write a new script when Raimi and Waldron signed on, so time was running out. Raimi said he felt very rushed and panicked about how soon he was expected to start, calling this almost impossible. The COVID-19 pandemic followed, Waldron and Raimi were able to start over with the movie after all of the Marvel films were moved to the calendar. And did you know, The Multiverse of Madness was supposed to come out before the latest Spider-Man movie? The Multiverse of Madness was originally scheduled to be released before Spider-Man No Way Home. As a result, No Way Home would have served as the MCU film's introduction to the multiverse. Then, Marvel shifted the release dates and No Way Home ended up arriving first. As a result, Waldron's script had to be altered in every way to introduce the multiverse, resulting in numerous changes for both films. One of the biggest changes the plot of the movie underwent is that Waldron chose to make Wanda the villain of the movie. The Multiverse of Madness was always going to include Wanda, now the Scarlet Witch. Waldron decided to make her the film's villain and wrote Wanda that way from the start because he didn't want another movie to have the fun of having her as a villain. At first, Elizabeth Olsen wasn't sure she wanted to play the villain, but she eventually came to like the opportunity to show a new side of the character. Then, one of the persistent rumors that came with Sam Raimi working on the movie was that Christine Palmer's character was said to be in and out of the film. Contrary to the initial announcements, it was reported that Rachel McAdams' character Christine Palmer would not be appearing in the film when Waldron and Raimi took over. That didn't turn out to be true in the end. Palmer ended up in both the first and subsequent universe. And interestingly enough, a certain character was supposed to play a bigger role in the movie. It seemed odd that Michael Stolberg appeared in one Multiverse of Madness scene. However, 
However, that was not initially intended. Stolberg was supposed to play a Dr. West from Earth 838, but he was killed and his body was found. Then Stolberg's conflicts with his schedule did not occur. Stolberg's appearance may have been a bit underwhelming in the movie, but we did see a regular Raimi cameo in the movie. Bruce Campbell, who played Ash in the Evil Dead films, was a childhood friend of Sam Raimi's. Campbell appears in cameos in many of Raimi's films. In fact, Campbell plays the iconic pizza papa in Multiverse of Madness, having previously appeared in Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy in three different roles. Plus, one Dream fan casting came true in Multiverse of Madness. On the internet, there is a lot of support for the idea that John Krasinski would play Reed Richards. Krasinski does indeed appear in the multiverse as one of the Illuminati members of the Fantastic Four. Naturally, he is killed right away, believing it to be a nod to Marvel fans and possibly a way to upset them. And did you know, Krasinski being added to the movie was a last minute decision. The initial idea was for Daniel Craig to play Balder the Brave as an Illuminati member. However, the film was filmed during the COVID-19 pandemic. Craig didn't want to put himself in danger of contracting COVID and passing it on to his family for a single day. As a result, they turned to Krasinski. As we mentioned earlier, filming for the movie took place during the height of the pandemic. As a result, the movie had some pretty peculiar shooting circumstances at times, especially for the actors. Filming Multiverse of Madness was chaotic due to COVID-19, which stopped production on multiple occasions. Krasinski, for example, filmed entirely during reshoots and he never met Elizabeth Olsen. Krasinski appeared as a stand-in while she worked and the two were combined post-production. So let's talk about one of the side characters. Did you know that one being was actually renamed because of copyright? The monster from the beginning of Multiverse of Madness, Gargantos, is based on a character from the Doctor Strange comics who goes by the name Shuma Gorat. However, the name changed because a Norwegian video game company owns the rights to that name. The eye of Gargantos was likewise displayed from Olsen's eye, a piece of information about her being the film's main bad guy. Despite the movie being released with the pandemic still happening, it surprisingly still made a lot of money. Even though Multiverse of Madness came out at a time when COVID-19 was still a problem that didn't stop it from being a huge hit, the film had the ninth largest opening weekend of all time. Bringing in $454.4 million worldwide, the film still made $411.3 million domestically and $955.8 million worldwide, a significant increase over Doctor Strange, despite receiving mixed reviews that somewhat dampen the number. Last but not least, you could expect to see a third installment of Doctor Strange in the future. Waldron decided to postpone the inclusion of the sorceress character Clea, and instead focus on Strange's relationship with Palmer. Although she is not referred to by name throughout the film, Clea does appear in the scene between the credits. Charlize Theron plays Clea, so it's safe to assume that another film starring Doctor Strange is in the works. To conclude, the movie The Multiverse of Madness was indeed a little mad. It not only gave Doctor Strange his second solo adventure several years after the first, but it also saw a well-known director return to the big screen after a long absence. As a result, Marvel's Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness was a highly anticipated film. With that, we're wrapping up today's video about the list of facts you didn't know about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Do you know of any other trivia about the movie that should be included in today's list? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. See you next time!